George. Brother George Pereira came to the renewal in 1991. Member of Our Lady of Mercy Prayer Group, Thain, India. He has three sons, three biological sons and one adopted daughter. He runs an NGO, Karuna Ghar Foundation, a daycare center for underprivileged kids. Presently, there are about 30 kids and his wife is the founder of the NGO. Good evening, Brother George, and welcome to St. Michael's Prayer Group. Thanks a lot for this introduction. Uh, so before I start, uh, actually Lent was only an excuse for me to speak on this particular topic that has been impressed upon my heart for quite some time. And uh, the topic is about fasting. Of course, not just fasting, but fasting accompanied by prayer. Only fasting would be like a hunger strike. So when I'm talking about fasting, I'm talking about fasting accompanied by prayer, which is extremely important. You know, after seeing the situation from the last, uh, I think so March will be two years, looking at the situation of this lockdowns that have been happening and the COVID uh, virus, coronavirus and whatever the sicknesses that are happening, it has affected the entire world. But one thing in the physical realm, it has uh, affected the world, but also the spiritual realm, we can see its effects. And one of the effects I've been seeing in these last few months is that even when the churches opened up, in between that opened up, and uh, I could see that uh, <clears throat> we have lost that zeal, that fire, that passion, the number of people that would come to church. Okay, I can understand about the elders, uh, 65 plus, who are not given permission to come out at the present moment. But I found youngsters, young blood, that even they stopped coming to church. Even when the churches were open, they made excuses. Not sure whether they were uh, attending online masses, but online masses was uh, uh, out of compulsion for some time because we really couldn't go to church. It was okay at that time. But when the churches opened up, I found that uh, we have lost that zeal, that fire, that passion. And everything has become so lukewarm and cold. Youngsters not coming to church, making excuses. But uh, at the same time, when you see the very people who are making excuses, whether they are youth or whether they are even adults, you find them roaming in the marketplace, going to buy their regular groceries. You see them traveling in the buses, at least in India. I do not know about uh, the country that you are, you are all in. But at least in Mumbai, the trains are jam-packed, the buses are packed. And I, uh, I assume many of you have lived in Mumbai. You are from Mumbai or from India. And uh, everything seems very normal on the outside. People, of course... Many wear masks, some don't wear masks. But they are moving out, going in for weddings, going in for parties, everything else, going back to work. Or even if it's work from home, but you are roaming, malls were open. But when it comes to church, I began to sense many people making excuses on the pretext, oh, there is coronavirus or COVID or whatever you may call it. But otherwise, people are roaming about. And that was, you know, a bit I was trying to reflect. And it was also troubling me. And this is when, when I strongly felt that what is it that we need to do to bring revival to a church? In fact, I spoke to many priests and I told them, in fact, I told the priests that, Fathers, in fact, now there is a more difficult job to get people back to the church, to put them back on fire and zeal for the Lord, that passion that they had. And many priests agree. I said, and I always tell them, and the charismatic renewal is, is one uh, 
uh, organization or whatever term you may call it or whatever name they may call it or one movement of the church that had brought tremendous revival you know lifted up the life of people their prayer life the knowledge of the word and uh, spontaneous prayer and you know really got them on zeal and fire and i i, I tell many priests as a father this is one movement that the holy spirit has allowed in the church the charismatic renewal they too will have to work very very hard to get back people on the right track once again because somehow during these two years there's a lot of complacency coldness lukewarmness that has penetrated the church and keeping that in mind where i felt this is my personal revelation and i'm sharing with you what personal understanding where i felt as though the lord telling me that tell my people those who still have a little fire and zeal that they need to fast and pray for their own revival for the revival of their own families their neighborhood their parishes and their church and if each one of us does this i'm sure the lord is going to once again have his mighty hand move in our parishes and so y'all calling me and not giving me any particular topic i felt this was the best thing to do it and since it's also the season of lent on the pretext of lent i thought i would tell you okay we'll talk on fasting but the actual truth is for me fasting is a lifestyle we need to uh, make it a lifestyle and today what i'm sharing with you it may not be a thorough teaching or you know uh, step by step on but i will be sharing with you certain things because my main goal my main goal for sharing uh, about this topic on fasting is to help us not start but i say we start recommit or increase our prayer life especially for our own selves especially for our own selves for our families for our near and dear loved ones and uh, all those who are associated with us our own prayer groups our own parishes and if each of us take this calling seriously i tell you god will bring a revival god will bring a revival so that's my main goal that's why i chose to take this particular topic about prayer accompanied by fasting or fasting with prayer accompanied by prayer not only fasting it's not a hunger strike so this is one of the most important roles that god is calling you and me for as individual if you are here listening to me today i believe you have not come here by chance god wants to speak to each one of us now remember god does not speak from the air or like a thunder he will come and say yo listen to me and do this do that no he will speak to any human being and i am also a human being and i believe god wants to speak to each one of us today at least to y'all through me he will speak through to somebody else through you when you spread the message or what can really bring revival and uh, renew to the entire church once again because i feel this burden today when i see our churches even though the permission is granted for 50% but yet our churches forget 50% i don't even see 20% coming for masses so that really troubles me and some priests keep telling me don't worry it will happen i said father i know it will happen but we have to work if not those who were coming have become so lukewarm for them it has become a pattern okay so let's uh, i just want to share a little about this so that and this is my prayer that each one of you will take it seriously so why prayer or intercession accompanied by fasting or abstinence why why is it important now we see in the old testament okay i would just give you few points in the book of torbit chapter chapter 12 verses 8 this this is what is written prayer is good when accompanied by fasting now this is not my word this is taken from the book of torbit chapter 12 verses 8 prayer is good when accompanied by fasting and of course what we do during lent is arm giving and righteousness so prayer is good when accompanied by fast now this is from the book of tobit now daniel in chapter 9 verses 3 three he says then i turned to the lord i turned my face to the lord seeking him by prayer and supplications with fasting 
you see these great men of god these the great women of god they sought the lord through prayer and through fasting fasting plays a very very important role and i want to share with you certain points from the scriptures why fasting is so important not only prayer but fasting so basically fasting is a spiritual discipline it is recommended recommended by the lord himself okay it's a practice by all saints but unfortunately today it is a forgotten practice it is a forgotten practice many people don't even fast they only fast maybe on good friday or ash wednesday but otherwise there is no fasting but as a member of the renewal or the charismatic renewal you and i at least from the renewal we should be men and women who fast and pray pray daily and also fast regularly i'm not saying fast every day but but make it a practice okay fasting is intentional fasting is intentional abstinence of food for a particular period of time so maybe you skip a meal or skip two meals or you skip a certain amount of meal for certain amount of days so that is the meaning of fasting where you intentionally not that because you are traveling and uh, because you don't get food and then after you say no no i am fasting it's not that that was not intentional that was unintentionally you didn't have any intentions and and you happen to skip a meal not fasting is when you deliberately say to yourself today i am not going to have my breakfast or i am not going to have my lunch or i am not going to have my dinner that's it okay fasting is actually telling god that he is more important than the most basic thing i need to survive on earth i repeat fasting is telling god that he is more important than the most important thing that is meant for our survival on earth you see we can remain without shelter if you don't have shelter okay you can still survive if you don't have clothes we can still survive but if we don't have food we will not survive for long we will not survive we will die and so you see food is the most basic thing for every human being or every living thing at least <clears throat> without food if we don't get food we will perish within a few days we can't survive for long and so when you are fasting when you are giving up that food intentionally what we are telling god god this is the most basic and the most important thing that i need for survival but today at this particular time i am all offering up this dinner i am offering up this lunch i am op- offering up this breakfast to you to tell you lord how important you are to me you are more important to me that is the meaning what we are telling the lord that is what we are telling the lord remember fasting is not about skipping one two meals that, that it's not a question okay i'm fasting so i skip one meal or skip two meals the purpose of fasting is to seek god to seek his will to seek his plan for our own lives to seek his plan his will what he wants us to do where he is leading us so that we can be in line with what god wants us to do that is the purpose of fasting we don't just fast okay when i'm fasting i'm skipping one meal i'm skipping two meals no that's not the the purpose the purpose of fasting is to seek god to draw closer to him to know his will is purpose for my life for my ministry for my job for my family what is his purpose what is the role he wants me to play that is the main purpose why the lord wants you and me to fast see christ himself jesus himself said that man does not live on bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god you see jesus was quoting jesus was quoting scriptures after scriptures jesus, jesus is trying to remind us jesus is telling us see a man does not survive on bread alone on food alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god and so fasting is a time where we should be listening to the lord fasting is a time not just to skip a meal and go that's not the purpose but it's a time when lord 
I am so hungry for your word. I am so hungry for your direction. I am so hungry for you to speak to me that I am willing to give up my physical food as a sign to show you how hungry I am spiritually. That is the purpose of fasting. So when you fast, when you and I fast, you should not be okay. I am fasting because I want this. I am fasting because I want that. That all follows. That all follows. But my main goal is fasting to seek God to draw closer to Him. That is my purpose of fasting. Now, Saint Isaac, the Syrian, this is what he says about fasting. When a man begins to fast, he is a saint, saint of the church. He says, when a man begins to fast, he straight away yearns in his mind to enter into a conversation with God. He says, see, when a person makes a decision and begins to fast, his main goal is to have a conversation, a talk, a chat. We chat with our friends. We talk to our friends. He says here, when you are fasting, you begin to already yearn in your heart and mind that I want to converse with God. I want to talk with my God. I want to talk to the Lord. And I want to not only talk, but I want to hear from Him. That is the purpose. That is the call of fasting. St. Gregory St. Gregory, he puts it very nicely. He says, it is impossible to engage in spiritual conflicts without the previous subjugation of our appetite. He says, we don't kill our appetite. It is impossible to enter into a spiritual warfare or a spiritual conflict or to win spiritual battles. You see, fasting is meant, is one of the weapons, not the only weapon, is one of the weapons for spiritual warfare. It's one of a very strong weapons of spiritual warfare. So fasting, as St. Gregory says, it is impossible to engage in a spiritual conflict without you uh, bringing into control your appetite. That means bringing into control through fasting. Great change. St. Isaac says that when a man begins to fast, he straight away yearns in his mind to converse, to talk with God. So when we are serious about a conversation with God, it's good to practice fasting accompanied with prayer. Now some of you may say, brother, I am too old for fasting. Now when I talk about fasting, I am not talking about starvation. There's a difference between fasting, there's a difference between starvation. I'm not talking about starvation. I'm talking about fasting is intentional. Now, if you say, brother, I am 60 years old, I am 70 years old, I cannot fast. Well, I have this to say to you. And uh, not only to you, but even to youngsters, if uh, there are youngsters in this group or if they are listening to me on YouTube, even to the youngsters. You see, Anna, the prophetess, she was married for 84 years. That means maybe her age was 94 if she got married at the age of 10 in those days. 94 or maybe 100. We, we don't, uh, I don't have the exact age. But she was fasting and praying for the coming of the Messiah. At that age, if she was fasting and praying and worshipping in the temple, then do we have an excuse? Okay, I can understand if we are sick. But even if we are sick, if you cannot fast from food, but you can at least give up something. Say if you are having... Uh, I do not know what are the dishes you all have over there. Say for India, the most basic, the most simple food is rice and dal or bread and dal or chapati and dal and a little pickle. You give up that pickle. I'm just giving you practical ways when, when we want to show our seriousness to God. Say if you're having a morning bread and butter, skip the butter, have your bread so that you don't know. Uh, say that, okay, I, I will fall down or I will or something will happen to me if I don't eat. I'm just giving some practical suggestions, okay? So let's not make excuses. In whatever way we can fast or whatever way we can abstain or make some sacrifices, that only shows our seriousness. I told you what is fasting, telling God you are so important to me, you are more important than food. So whatever I ate, maybe unless we are critical on the bed, and we cannot move and we are on saline or whatever it is. Okay, but we can make a practice, a small attempt, a small attempt will start growing. After all, it's all over here in the mind. It's all in the mind. So if you start with giving up 
half chapati tomorrow there will come a time where you will able to give up your full meal because your your stomach your mind has to adjust the problem is we need to be the bosses of our stomach unfortunately for many of us the stomach is the boss is our boss we are not the bosses the stomach controls us we don't control the stomach i always give example some 2 3 years ago there was this heavy flood in kerala and uh, quite a number of people died but people died either because of some sickness water sickness or people died because of uh, uh drowning or this they were without food for 2 3 days but nobody died of hunger somehow they survived that okay so fasting is not something that uh, we as christian should say it's optional for us but especially as charismatics and god wants us to show our seriousness I, am i really serious about my spiritual life about the spiritual life of my family spiritual life of my prayer group of my parish of the community of the of the different people how serious we are okay so the lord expects at least all of us who are healthy to accompany our prayer with fasting or accompany our fasting with prayer either way you say but it should be accompanied by prayer and by fasting so one of the scriptures where jesus very clearly says you no know, in the gospel of matthew chapter 6 verses 16 he says when you fast he did not say if you fast he says when you fast so all of you who are listening to me jesus is expecting you he says when you fast he is not telling you i is not telling me if you fast he is not giving us an option he is saying when you fast that means he expects us to fast and probably regularly whether once in a week or twice a week or, or whatever to our, according to our capacity fasting should be done according to our capacity not according to what others do so i am doing the same thing no whatever our capacity is if your capacity is to give up one chapati give up one chapati don't stay hungry that's why i told you fa- fasting is not starvation okay so jesus says when you fast not if you fast he is saying when you fast and then he goes on so jesus is expecting his followers to fast and pray so now you and i have to respond when we know jesus is calling us to fast the second thing that like i would like to share with you is fasting and praying as i told you is showing a desperation for god's presence hunger for god's presence hunger for more of god i remain physically hungry to tell god god i am spiritually hungry for you i need you more than anything i need you more than food i want your presence i want you you are more important i want to get connected with you fasting is literally showing that uh, how desperate we are for god you know in the gospel of matthew chapter 9 verses 14 and 15 let me read one day the disciples of saint john came to jesus and asked him why don't your disciples fast like we do and the pharisees do and jesus replied two wedding guests mourn while celebrating with the groom of course not but some day the groom will be taken away from them and then they will fast so what what is jesus trying to say is jesus trying to say no no yeah you, they should not fast no that's wrong see the words that he says but some day the groom will be taken away from them and then they will fast it's a sign there's going to be a time where we will have a desert experience you know what's a desert experience no where we don't experience the lord at all even while praying it is like we are experiencing dryness you are praying as though you feel you are praying it's hitting the wall and coming back to you you don't enjoy the presence of god he says that's the time when the groom is taken away the presence of god is taken away that's the time you must fast and pray and so the best time for fasting and praying is especially when you and i are going to spiritual dryness if you are struggling in your prayer life you are not experiencing the lord you are not able to touch his presence that's one of the times where you can start fasting and praying believe me my friends i have practiced this and it's amazing within 2 3 days i get back into the presence of the lord there has been time where i felt i'm going through a dry phase at that time i go for long fast not for short fast i go for fasting for 3 days 5 days 10 days 30 days 40 days but i have seen that because god has trained me this is just my personal uh, 
view okay uh, i'm just sharing it very openly it's not to boast but for the glory of god because i have a very clear intention i want to encourage and motivate people to this area of fasting and praying and i will give you the reason also why so the best time to go on a long fast especially when you are going through a dry period okay secondly we fast and pray first i said is to tell god how desperate we are for him for his presence the second thing is we fast and pray to have a repentant heart you know fasting and prayer uh helps us to repent as we are aware of sin and unforgiveness are a blocks in our life they are a block to our blessings fasting and prayer helps us to repent now whenever uh, fasting was associated humble when we are called to humble ourselves it is associated with fasting in many many places so when we talk about yeah i humbled myself with prayer and fasting i humbled myself with fasting if my people who are called by name will humble themselves so basically most of this places when the word humble is used is talking about fasting humbling ourselves and this we learn from the book of jonah we all know the story of jonah i don't need to repeat the full story so god asks jonah to go to the city of nineveh we all know he tried to escape but he came back but ultimately what happened after jonah pronounced judgment on the city of nineveh he said 40 days and this city is going to be destroyed and when the came king came to know what did he do the first thing the king covered himself with sackcloth and sat in the dust dust and he ordered the people to fast and pray he ordered the people to fast and pray when god saw what they what they did and how they turned from their wicked ways he relented and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened you see god wanted to destroy nineveh why because of the sin he used jonah to preach to them and what was jonah's preaching 40 days and nineveh is going to be destroyed what did the king do he immediately realized god is angry and wants to destroy and so fasting helps us to repent fasting helps us to stop the wrath of god fasting protects us that that is a weapon that god has given you and me that is the solution that god has given you and me and so the moment they repented they fasted they prayed god did not destroy in a way when we fast and pray on a regular basis god protects us from the wrath that is to come because there's so much of sin in this world so much of sin but when you and i as people of god fast and pray we become aware of the presence of god we 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 literally stop god from pouring out his wrath on us another area why you and i need to fast and pray we need to fast and pray especially we need to fast and pray because of the work we are called to do pray and fast to prepare ourselves the work god has ordained you and me to do you are in this prayer group or you may be in different ministries god has called you and me and he, and he has ordained us for his work and so we fast and pray for the ministry or for the work that god has given us not all of us may be preachers not all of us may be praise and worship leaders but whatever work we do when we fast and pray that work gets anointed see jesus in the gospel of matthew chapter 4 1 to 17 mark 1 12 to 13 luke 4 1 to 14 we see about jesus spending 40 days 40 nights in the wilderness and praying before he could actually begin his ministry work now i want you to notice in luke chapter 14 or uh, chapter 4 verses 14 and you know if you read that full thing it says that jesus as soon as he was baptized he was filled with the holy spirit jesus was baptized was filled with the holy spirit and led into the wilderness where he was led to fast and pray but if you see at the end of this uh, entire episode of jesus fasting he says 
and Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. Forty days ago, he was baptized. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. Forty days later, he moves in the power of the Holy Spirit. Two different things. One is being filled with the Holy Spirit and prayer and fasting during those 40 days. He received supernatural empowerment. Jesus could have easily begin his ministry as soon as he got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jesus could have easily begin his ministry. But why did he allow himself to go into that wilderness of fasting and praying? Because he's trying to teach us something. Whatever ministry you do, whatever work you are doing, it should be accompanied by prayer and fasting. And that's why as Christians, and especially as charismatic, we, uh, fasting and prayer should be a lifestyle. It's not once in a way that, okay, uh, because now length is coming, I will fast only during length. No, as I told you, length is only an excuse for me to bring this topic to you. It should be a lifestyle. It should be on a regular basis, especially for those who are involved in ministry, those who are involved in seriousness with the Lord. Jesus himself fasted and prayed. If he fasted and pray, prayed, then why, why, why should we not do it? Fasting and prayer, another important thing is uh, to pray for uh, deliverance, to pray for healing. You know, uh, friends, I'm, I'm not uh, uh, trying to boast or say uh, something just to please somebody, but I want to share this. It's all for the glory of God and not for the glory of God alone, but I believe God wants each one of us to do. I have seen the times when I'm fasting, the days when I'm fasting and praying as usual, but I'm accompanying it with fasting. My prayer life is daily for one, two hours, but uh, there are many times I, I just skip my breakfast or skip breakfast and lunch. It can sometimes go on for days together. I have seen tremendous power being released even at a simple prayer. I'm telling you a simple prayer that is made for people or this. I have seen deliverances, healing and miracles happening compared to when I'm not fasting and praying. That is the truth, friends. And I have experienced it. And because I've experienced it, I'm sharing with you. I'm not telling you what somebody else did. I'm telling you of my own personal life. I have seen this in my own life. And that's why I give prayer accompanied by fasting so much of importance because I know so much can be done with this simple thing. This is not some rocket science. It's simply when we obey God and tell him, Lord, you are more important. I want your intervention. And Lord, to tell you how serious I am, see, I'm giving up the most basic thing, my food. But you please come, Lord. You are showing your seriousness to God. In Mark 9, 29, we see they were trying to cast out a demon. And what does Jesus say? This kind can come forth nothing but by prayer and fasting. Mark 9, 29. He says, these demons will not come out that way, except by prayer and fasting. You know, I want to share uh, this testimony. Many, many years ago, uh, there was this girl who was possessed. And uh, so the prayer group leader said, we will all fast and pray for this girl. He told the family members to pray for her. She was, uh, uh, it was not possession. It was actually oppression. There are three aspects, oppression, oppression, possession. Possession is very, very rare. But it was absolute oppression. She was talking like a man. and then all top types of funny things, frightful things, I would say, not funny things, she was doing. And uh, the prayer group leader said that you must fast every Friday for her. So the first Friday, people fasted. Second Friday, people fasted. Third Friday, the demon was not going. The demon was harassing. Every time she was prayed over, she would manifest, yell, shout, talk like a man. But during the fourth or the fifth Friday, the demon began to speak. And this is what the demon says. Why did you tell these people to fast? Why did you tell these people to fast? They are fasting. Their physical fasting has made me spiritually weak. And now I cannot stay in this body. I have to leave. My friends, this is not a story. This is not a made up story. I was personally involved in this case. Where the demon literally spoke. Your fasting has made me weak and I cannot stay in this body. I need to leave. 
there are times when we need to fast and pray for our friends, our family members, because we do not know. We have not understood, but God has given us this weapon. See, we don't understand everything. I don't claim to understand everything about fasting, but I know it works. Like there's a saying in Hindi, na, Are bhai tu, what paid mat gin, tu khali aam kha. Aam khane se matlab, patte ginne se nahi. You have the mango, don't count the leaves. So this works. Fasting accompanied by prayer or prayer accompanied by fasting works. It has tremendous power because God has ordained it that way. And so my friends, I encourage you. Imagine if there's, if there's some spirit of sloppiness that's come into the church or laziness or lethargy or something that is stopping people. When you and I, we are few, maybe one, two, five, ten, we'll start fasting and praying for revival of our prayer groups, revival of our churches, revival in our family life. You think God will not hear? He will hear 100%. Why? Because he has ordained fasting and prayer for our lives. I told you Anna, she was so old, but yet she fasted and prayed. Now, since I have nine minutes left, it's still 10.15 uh, according to my Indian timing. I want to share with you a very, very, very important uh, uh, scripture. This was in my daily Bible reading. This came about last month. And that really shook me up. Believe me, it really shook me up because it only confirmed uh, that what God was speaking about fasting. Now, this is taken from the book of Judges. I, and I want you all to read it, my dear friends. If you all can read uh, in this time, Judges chapter 19. Okay. Judges chapter 19, right up to uh, 20 and read 20 also. Okay. You just go through it, the full story. This is about uh, uh, a man, okay, uh, from the tribe of Levi. Now, uh, okay, I will just give it in very, very short, very, very short. But I want you to read Judges chapter 19 and 20 and understand it. Uh, now, this was the person who got a con uh, concubine and he got uh, brought her home. And then, uh, you know, he was going back, taking her back because she went to a house and he was taking her back. And uh, what happens is that uh, he goes uh, and he stays with an uh, elderly person who says, please don't stay on the street, you come and you stay. And uh, actually what happens is that uh, this tribe of Benjamin, those people were so wicked at that time that they began to bang the door and said, send this man out so that we can have sex with him. And then the old man is pleading, says, no, don't do that. Oh, and oh, this, you take my virgin daughters, do whatever you want or take his concubine and do whatever you want. And ultimately, this man, he pushes his concubine out of the house and then whole night they rape her and ultimately morning she is dead, she dies. What he does is he cuts 12 pieces and sends this to the tribes of Israel. Now that, that's what the story all about. And ultimately when the Israelites come to know that why did you do such a wicked thing and he begins to tell them, you know, then all the Israelites were united as one man from Dan in the north, Beersheba, including those from across Jordan. And it goes on to say, and the Levite, the husband of the woman who had been murdered said, my concubine and I came to spend the night in Geba a town that belongs to the people of Benjamin. And he says that night some leading citizens wanted to have sex with him and then he put his concubine out and they raped her till she died and that's why I sent the 12 pieces. And so the people of Israel were very angry. Now listen to this. And the people of Israel told the people of Benjamin, give us those people so that they can be punished and we can purify Israel. But they don't listen. They don't listen. And so ultimately what happened? Now listen to this. Now this is the most important thing I want you to pay attention. Okay. But the people of Benjamin would not listen. Instead, they came from their towns and gathered in Geba to fight the Israelites. In all, 26,000 warriors armed with swords arrived with Geba to join the 700 allied groups who lived there. Among the Benjamin allied troops, 700 were left-handed. Okay. They are describing all this. Okay. But now let's go to verse 80. Before the battle... Before the battle, before the people of Israel could attack the Benjaminites, before the battle, now listen to this carefully. The Israelites went to Bethel and asked God. Point one, what did they do? They 
took it up in prayer. They went and they asked God, which tribe should go first and attack the people of Benjamin? And what the Lord answered, Judah is the first to go. He says, let Judah go first and attack them. They prayed. The Lord spoke. So the Israelites left early the next morning and camped near Geba. Then they advanced towards Geba to attack the men of Benjamin. But the Benjamin, Benjamin's warriors who were defending the town came out and killed 22 Israelites on, that, on the battlefield that day. Now tell me what went wrong. These people, they sought the Lord. The Lord answered them. But yet they experienced the loss of 22,000 Israelite soldiers. Doesn't this happen to us sometimes? We prayed, but yet we are not seeing the victory. We have prayed, but we are not seeing the victory. Okay, let's go further. But the Israelites encouraged each other and took the position again on the same place they had fought previous day. For they had gone up to Bethel and wept in the presence of the Lord until evening. Now when they went, they not only interceded, they interceded, they prayed with tears, with much passion and said, Lord, please, I, I do not know what their intercession might have been or what their prayer, but it says they wept till evening. That means from morning to evening, they were crying and they were praying before God. They, again, they asked the Lord, should we fight against our relatives from the Benjamin? Again, they asked. And the Lord had said, go out and fight against them. Again, the Lord is speaking to them. Go out and fight against them. So the next day, they went out again to fight against the men of Benjamin. But the men of Benjamin killed another 18,000 Israelites of all who were experienced with the sword. Can you imagine? First day, they prayed. God said, go. They experienced defeat. Second time, they were crying throughout, weeping before the Lord. Again, they lost 18,000 swordsmen. You can just imagine what they might have gone through. Their faith might have been shaken up, must have shaken, uh, been shaken up terribly. Their faith must have become weak. That after praying, after seeking the Lord, and the Lord is telling them something, and yet they are experiencing defeat. Let's read further. So the next day they went out again to fight against the men of Benjamin. But the men of Benjamin killed another 18,000 Israelites, all who were experienced with the sword. Then all the Israel went to Bethel and wept in the presence of the Lord and fasted until evening. The third time, first time they prayed, second time they prayed with tears. Third time they prayed with tears and with fasting. Then they brought a burnt offering, peace offering to the Lord. The Israel went up seeking direction from the Lord. The Israelites asked the Lord, should we fight against our relatives from the Benjamins or should we stop? Because now their hearts had sunk. Twice they lost after praying to the Lord. Lord said, go and they are losing. The Lord said, go tomorrow, I will hand them over to you. It was only after they, were, they fasted, the Lord said, I will now hand them over to you. Now further, I want you to read because my time is up. I have just one minute left. They ultimately won the battle. Why am I telling you this, my friend? Sometimes we try praying for days. We are saying, oh, I'm praying for so many days, so many months, so many years. Oh, I'm weeping before the Lord. I'm breaking my head. Try fasting. Because that is the weapon that God has given us. You know, when we fast and pray, God begins to correct our direction. God begins to make a way. Because that is one of God's ways. That is one of God's ways. I, I, I don't have any reason or, or any understanding why God has chosen fasting. There's no thorough. There can be hundreds of reasons. Each of us will give different reasons. But what I am telling you, remember my dialogue in Mumbai. Aam khane se matlab, gutli ginne se ne, ya patte ginne se ne, ya jhaad ginne se ne. Don't count the leaves on the mango tree. You're getting the mango eaten. 
And Jesus has given us this weapon of prayer accompanied with fasting. Prayer daily, but with sometimes or often as usual with fasting. It has tremendous impact. My friend, is there some bondage in your life? Or something that you are struggling with? How desperate are you to be free from that? How desperate are you for a healing for that? How desperate are you for the deliverance from that? Give fasting and prayer a try. Nobody dies by skipping one meal. Nobody dies. You will not die. Don't worry. Because you are fasting. You are not starving to death. You are fasting. If you feel you are going honky, wonky, tonky, fine, eat a little. But make it a habit, a practice. It is, I told you, it's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. Once you change your thinking, your way of thinking, you will automatically fast. I will end up with only one thing, my dear brothers and sisters. Okay? Uh, I, I'm just giving you a general idea. Say in the morning you get up and there is somebody who gets critical in your house and you have to rush that person to the hospital. And in the bargain, you rush to the hospital. You're running here, running there, running for this medicine, running for this, running for that, and doing all that. And suddenly you realize it's nearly 4 o'clock in the evening from morning you are out. Because of that tension and that pressure that you had to take care of that person, you forgot to have your breakfast, you forgot to have your lunch. Did you die? You never died. No? But that was because of certain things that happened, certain pressure. Fasting is intentional. Lord, today I will skip my breakfast. Please give me the grace. Give me the strength. Or if you cannot do it, Start reducing little, little. Lord, I take so much tea in Bombay. There is no pura chai. I'll be cutting chai. Though. Lord, today I will have cutting chai. Day after you can say, Lord, I will not take chai. I will not take tea. Make it a habit. Let it be a lifestyle. I'm telling you, my friends, I have found prayer accompanied by fasting, or you can say fasting should be accompanied by prayer, not only fasting. Is one of a very, very strong weapon that the Lord Jesus has given us because he himself fasted, Paul fasted, all the saints you see throughout the early church, you see all the apostles, you see the early prophets. Fasting and prayer is the key. So don't only wait for Lent. Okay, now season of Lent, I will fast. Make prayer and fasting your lifestyle, and especially as charismatics who, who have experienced the Lord who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, we want to see revival in our churches, in our Catholic church, or among other people in our own families. We have to pray and pray and pray till we see victory. Till we see victory. Praise the Lord. Let's just make a small prayer. Father in heaven, I thank and praise you for everyone who's on this group right now, whoever's uh, listening to my voice and the sharing. I pray, Lord, that you will inspire us who will strengthen us that truly we will be men and women who will fast and pray on a regular basis to see the great things you want to do in our life. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. We give you all glory, honor and praise. Amen.